Hello, hello, and welcome to the Where Does It Come From podcast. Today, I'm really pleased to have with me Elaine Marsden, or as she's much better known, she's the pre-love chica. Welcome aboard, Elaine. Thank you very much, Jo. It's my pleasure to be with you today. We're really looking forward to talking pre-loved with you. We're live on Facebook and we'll be releasing this, um, the audio of this onto the podcast um, when probably in a week or so. Um, and then we'll also put this live up on YouTube as well. So there's no way that anyone can possibly miss this and get all your words of wisdom about pre-loved and pre-loved shopping. So first of all, um, I'd like to get you to tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background and what got you into pre-loved shopping? Do you know what? While you were saying, um, doing the intro, I was thinking, do you know, I absolutely love pre-loved clothes. There's no other way to say it. You know, I am just so passionate about it. And what got me into it? Well, you know, probably I'm 60 plus right now. And probably for the last, I don't know, 40 decades you know, I have had my eye on secondhand clothes. Even when I was growing up in Wales, you know, I used to love going to jumble sales, but it's kind of like picked up over the last 10 years. And it's like a semi business now because, you know, I, I, I love it so much. I want to share it with others, this passion. And, you know, I will take people out shopping with me and, and introduce them to the delights of pre-loved charity shopping and and it is delightful but you know you um we've known each other for quite a few years because we tend to end up being put on agendas don't we speaking about different aspects of ethical fashion and I can assure everybody here you can see Elaine's wearing a gorgeous velvet jacket and is very stylish which she is one stylish lady and the last event we were at she was wafting her wares and giving us the whole story of everything so this lady is a style guru but she does it all with secondhand clothing it's quite yeah. amazing yes I am wearing a pre-loved jacket it's beautiful it's very satiny and a gorgeous kind of like deep red color and yeah the last time we met we were at a the only way is ethics like an ethical fashion show which was absolutely fabulous because um, you were showcasing your amazing where does it come from range of clothing and I had a 15 minute slot on the catwalk where I decided to change my outfits I was the only model change my outfits as I was talking about the the story behind each of the clothing items that I was wearing it was quite a challenge but I think I pulled it off <laughs> it was it was wonderful and it was lovely the way that Elaine had uh, a very stylish gentleman who was standing with her next outfit ready to put it on her as she was talking and walking up and down the catwalk so it was really very impressive <laughs> yes now that stylish gentleman I'll give a shout out to Stuart Goff because he absolutely loves secondhand clothes as well and you know um, often men are kind of a little bit behind when it comes to buying pre-loved clothing but Stuart uh, loves this whole look and he also did a challenge one year to visit all of the charity shops in Suffolk where we live and he did it and he hasn't even got a car he just like <laughs> made this pact to do it and he achieved it uh, it's a remarkable story so there are quite a few men out there who you know are dabbling and we want to get more men involved of course we do and uh, it's a bit confidential at the moment but I'm hoping to work with a, a kind of a local uh, chap who wants to promote this whole you know ethical way of shopping for men so watch this space yeah no that's that's fantastic I think you're absolutely right about men because I think um you know for women you know quite a lot of women have really caught on to this idea that you don't need to have the latest fast fashion item and wear everything your friends wear you can actually have your own personal style and what better way to get that is to go to a charity shop and get completely unique items so you look different from everybody else but men maybe it's bursting on them a bit more gently I suppose yes but we'll get there we'll, we'll work on them um but you know I mean let's let's talk about you know style um when you when you buy second hand you can mix and match you know you're not going to be going into one of these fast fashion shops and buying something that everyone else will be wearing that season you are 
picking the things that you love, you like the look of, and, you know, with some advice sometimes, you know, you can have such a unique outfit that may combine vintage with more modern. Absolutely. And, and we know that the kids and the young people are really getting into this now with sites like Depop, as well as obviously the charity shops for charity shopping. But Depop has done very well over the pandemic where people can buy pre-love fashion from yes. their, the comfort of their own home. Yes, yes. Depop and Vinted and eBay, of course. But, you know, Depop is really kind of very fashionable amongst young people. And, you know, you're, you're telling a story about the clothes, which is my my good thing. You know, I, you know if you're selling something, you know, why are you getting rid of it? Just just add a little description to the item, you know, and um, it just adds, adds something, adds something to the item, I have to admit. Uh, I don't very often sell my clothes on these sites because I tend to take everything back to the charity shop once I'm fed up with it, keep it in circulation. This is my own version of the circular economy. But just recently, I have to admit, my, my wardrobes were bulging. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, like about a decade of uh, buying stuff and not really clearing things out. And, and there is something to be said about a decluttered wardrobe, which we can talk about later. So anyway, uh, my wonderful daughter-in-law helped me to go through my items. And the consequence of that is that I've got a rail of clothes in, in my living, in my dining area at the moment that I want to pass on to others and I want to tell the story about them. I, I don't really love them anymore, but I think someone else will. Uh, and so that's my intention to take each item and put it onto a site like Depop and describe something about where I last wore them. I think, I think you, you raise a very good point there about circular economy and a form of circular economy, because mm -hmm. there's so many clothing, items mm -hmm. of clothing that are just not in use. And it's the same principle as yes. the car sitting on the drive, really. It's not doing anybody any good there. Um, yes. It can be out there, it can be breathing, you know, it can yes. be giving life and um, yes. giving joy, you know. And as you know, stories behind clothes is very important to me as well. Yes. And yes. our stories, where does it come from, tend to be about um, the, how the clothing was made, where the fibres were grown and that kind of thing. If you start then adding on top of that where it was worn, who wore it, you know, you, I mean, I've spoken to you lots about this and there's, you've had, we've got some wonderful stories about some of the clothing that you, yes. you've bought over the years. I want yes. to come back briefly to your background because one thing that I stand in awe of you for is your excellent skills on social media and Facebook, Instagram, there's always a fabulous video, you know, another post there talking about pre-loved style and really living the dream, putting it out there, showing you wearing things. There's been some fantastic um, reels on Instagram. Do you have skills in digital um, marketing and can you pass on any tips to people who might want to get involved in pre-loved and share their stories? Yes, I, I guess my background is one of training, I started my, uh, well, I started as a teacher in a secondary school and then kind of moved on from that and then went into training businesses in IT skills. And so, you know, the other thing I'm quite passionate about is a bit of software. I'll, I'll take a bit of software and learn how to use it inside out. And then I love sharing what I know with other people. So yeah, over the, over the years, uh, I've become very skillful at um, various platforms, not least Instagram. I do Instagram training. I've just completed a, an Instagram course for our local college for businesses. And that was, that was well received. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really love taking a package and learning it and sharing. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's just a wonderful, fun way of um, showcasing the clothes that you own. Instagram is just perfect for that. And these new reels where you can kind of jump from one item to another inside the same video. That is a lot of fun. <laughs> it, reaches, it reaches the audience. I mean, one of the... Um, yes issues we talk about a lot on this podcast is how do you share the message how do you inspire people and I think you know a lot of people see pre-loved clothing as hand-me-downs from an older cousin of out-of-date clothes or something a bit unfashionable and tacky but you know by making those videos and sharing the stylish side of it then I think you're yes. really you can reach the audience in a much better way yeah. um, and you also take people out shopping as well tell us a bit about that 
Yes, well, um, there's a, a whole thing that I do actually under the umbrella of Airbnb. So many people know Airbnb as a place to stay, house to, to, to stay in, um, but they also have this whole range of experiences. And this is a great thing. So they do all the marketing for you. So if you're thinking, oh, I would like to share what I know with other people in my community, consider Airbnb experiences. So I've actually got a two hour charity shop experience um, under the umbrella of Airbnb. I will take up to about six people out charity shopping with me. I've got an itinerary. Uh, we'll go to about four or five of my favourite charity shops. Uh, first of all, we'll do like a style consultation because one of the key things is to be really clear about what it is you might want to buy before you go out there. Uh, and that's going to lead me on to talking about my favourite purchase in a moment. But we'll come back to that. Remind me, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about you know what what you might be looking for. You know what your style might be, um, and you know we'll have a, a clear plan beforehand before we hit the shops, and then we'll go out and have a couple of hours of fun. And you know I'll be there holding the clothes, giving a little bit of advice if you can go into the changing room and try things on. And inevitably, at the end of the two hours, people have got a couple of things to take home with them. Sometimes people go a bit crazy and they <laughs> become a bag full of things. That's good because there are treasures to be found in these charity shops, you know, and go check out my Instagram and see some of the things that I've purchased. And people are kind of almost amazed that I've, I've picked these things up in charity shops, but they're there, you know. I'll put, I'll put a link into your Instagram and hopefully people can go and take a look because I know I, I, I followed you for years and I love the stories that you put mm. on your Instagram and some of the things that you find and like you say they really are treasures yeah in fact, in fact I think just before Covid as part of a BBC um, Suffolk show you took myself and Mel Menham's out charity shopping which was yeah. really good fun wasn't it it was a really good yes, fun yes it was fun it was fun uh so I think I, I'm, I'm ready to share a recent purchase one of my favorite ever purchases until the that next one about course. it until the next one <laughs> <laughs> okay so um one of the things uh, that I have I've got involved in this um, ecstatic dance DJing. Uh, I've been in Bali and I decided I wanted to bring that back to my community here locally. And, you know, DJs really should wear bright, sparkly things, but at least this DJ should. <laughs> so I had in my mind, oh, I will go out into the charity shops, and this was only last Saturday, and see if I can find something to wear for my next uh, event. Well, I'm not kidding. I know this isn't going to work on a podcast, but I'm going to show you for those that are watching on Facebook Live. I picked up the most remarkable bodysuit with long sleeves, leg leggings, all in one, full of sequins that glitter and shine that catch the light, catch all of the DJ lights that shine on them. And it was hanging up in a charity shop called Emmaus in the Ipswich Town Centre, and um, it was just seven pound. Wow. It's not, oh my gosh, it's maybe a bit long for me in the legs because it, it just was described as long, long, a long, uh, long tall Sally type uh, oh, yes. style. Yes. I thought, well, I'll take it because I might be able to alter it. I didn't need to because the, uh, the outfit is very stretchy and, and it's almost like wearing tights. And it's just remarkable. It is truly remarkable. So I had the intention, I want to find something for DJing. And there, lo and behold, was that very same thing waiting for me. That's it, it's beautiful. So put your mind on it. Put your mind on what it is you might be looking for, particularly as we're coming up to the season of potential parties, etc. You know, exactly. Is that, and you're going to get, well, I think what people don't realise is you're actually going to get a lot more choice, aren't you? Because if you go into a big high street chain, they yes. might have a number of different styles, but really it's often variations of the same theme. Whereas if you go to a charity shop, everything is completely different, isn't it? Yes. And it could come from um, something that's been in someone's wardrobe 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Just don't know. Actually, Joe, you know, the other day I um, had a, a, an article in a, in a paper in a local um, magazine about what I do, and an elderly couple 
in their 80s got in touch with me and they said they've got three rails of 1960s clothes and would I like to come and have a look at them Wonderful. <laughs> so I did go and have a look and um yeah picked up a couple of things but it was like oh I was so excited I mean she was a little bit of a larger size than me um so but just the excitement I love looking at clothes that have been you know pre-loved before mm -hmm. something about the textures something about the way they're made um you know um fabric etc that is just thrilling to me We've talked about this before, haven't we? We should do a fashion show where we get people to bring in things mm. and either model them or get someone else to model them and put the story alongside. Because I bet there's some stories for those 1960s clothes, some really good stories where, they, where they've been to, you know, weddings <gasps> and events. Exactly. She had this, it was, it was a long cape that you know, had a hood um and it had been worn to a wedding and I picked it up it was so heavy the material was the heaviest material imaginable but yeah so um you know that was the story behind that cape I think if it had been black I might have it was grey but I think right. you know I'm, I'm actually looking for a long cape mm -hmm. actually that's the next thing on my list <laughs> watch this space <laughs> I've never looked for a long cape <laughs> since I was about five years old. I wanted to be a red riding hood. I did have a red cape because I wanted to be red. Did you? I wonder what happened to that. That's a whole yeah. other subject. Yeah. Um, I have a very strong memory of walking down the road wearing red shoes, red socks, a red dress and a red cape and thinking I looked the absolute bee's knees. Did you watch out for the wolf? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I saw a wolf. It was, it was all right. <laughs> But oh, that's, that's really, it's really interesting. And I know, I mean, my favourite story of yours, and I'm going to get you to tell it, even though you've told it 500 times, is what's your favourite famous person, the charity shop purchase? Yes. Well, I have in my possession Felicity Kendall's jacket. Yes, actually, <laughs> came with a certificate too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I know it's genuine. Actually, I didn't get it in the charity shop. I actually got it from Oxfam because they have like an online um, store. And it's uh, her jacket was a Giorgio Armani jacket. I think it cost me something like £20. Um, but um, yeah, a label, very famous, owned by Felicity. It's very small and petite. Uh, and, you know, I can't help but think, I wish I'd known where she last wore it. Yes, yeah. I would add to the story. But, you know, I tell you what, Joe. what we're all about, really, what I'm about is trying to encourage people not to get rid of their clothes, or certainly not to put them in landfill, not yes. to throw them away. Because, you know, so much of, uh, of clothing, I don't know, uh, goes into landfill. 240,000 um, tonnes a year. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah unbelievable and you know that's something I can never do you know I can't throw anything in in the bin that's fabric because it takes so long to um, mm. biodegrade isn't it lycra is like I don't know 200 years or whatever it is yeah. <laughs> everything can be um, kind of like recycled in some way I was just reading recently even even bras I mean I have to admit I'm sorry if it's going to upset some people but I have bought pre-loved bras from the charity mm. shop and they've been great yeah. So, you know, if you're thinking, if you're having a wardrobe um, edit, declutter, don't think well, nobody will want this. Just if, if, if it's like not particularly the best quality, put it in a bag and label it, take it to the charity shop and they will be able to do something with it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the important thing. Yeah. Nothing ever needs to be thrown away. No, there's just no reason. And you talk about bras, actually, just going back to that. I know a lot of people who give things to charity shops that are brand new because yes. they don't suit them, you know. So you might well come up with something that's never been worn for yes. four or five pounds just because, you know, it's um, it's mm. an unwanted gift or just the wrong colour or the wrong size. Um, yes. And size is an interesting one, actually, because I know when you and I went out, when you took me and Mel out um, charity shopping, Mm. We both ended up as mums buying things for our children and not buy them for ourselves. But I do remember falling in love with this absolutely gorgeous dress that um, and I went to try it on and I, I'm a, usually a size 10, sort of at the upper end of a size 10. But I could not get this zip 
anywhere near over my <laughs> bum and it's because the sizing has changed hasn't it so you do need to change exactly. things on yeah I mean I could go through a few tips for charity shopping right now I mean one of them is you know not to be just strict on the size you think you are to look either size so say I'm a size 10 I might look in the eights and even 12s and sometimes if it's a jumper I'm looking for I'll just look all sizes mm. you know so don't be kind of just restricted to the size you think you are because and certainly vintage clothing can be very much smaller than mm. our sizes now so definitely do that check and um, because of that you need time so you can't really just think well I'll dash in there and find something and dash out just give yourself time you know, it's almost like a kind of meditation for me. It's something I'll go in and just browse the rails. And, uh, you know, sometimes I, I'm not necessarily expecting to find anything. So I'm open minded. Uh, so I definitely would recommend having the time. Uh, and also, you know, if there's something slightly wrong with that item, you know, consider perhaps doing a little bit of repair on it. Mm. And if you're not very good yourself with the sewing machine, then maybe somebody else you know can help you. Um, as another point, I'll just say about this, one of my favourite coats that I bought in an Edinburgh charity shop uh, many years ago, it's like a puffer jacket, golden. Oh, and my yeah. favourite, it's like I'm in, I get into bed with it because I hate the cold and I put it on and I feel like, Oh, I feel so comfortable. Anyway, I've had it for maybe six years in my charity shop. The zip went. Oh. The zip's gone. Well, my daughter-in-law is very uh, confident with the sewing machine and she's bought me a new zip and she's going to repair it. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so happy about that because this coat is so, it's got many memories associated really? with it. But sometimes you think the zip's gone, that's it. Mm. Well, that's, yeah, that's the culture that, you know, of late we've been pushed into. And I would like to give a shout out to tailors at this point, because um, mm. getting a tailor to do alterations is a wonderful way of changing a garment, making it fit you, um, giving it a, long, a better lease of life, like you say, repairs. And we had um, my story for this one is my um, older son. He's gone into sixth form and in sixth form they have to wear a shirt that isn't a uniform shirt, but it has to be a shirt. And my husband used to work um, for a large corporate, but now he tends to work from home and wear smart casual. But he used to wear cufflinks. So we took all his old shirts down to um, our tailor down on Norwich Road and he put, turned all of the cufflink cuffs into button cuffs so that my son can wear them. And I must admit, it makes me happy just to have kept them all alive and in use. But also it's a lovely father to son sort of memory thing as well. I love that story. That's wonderful. Gosh, I hadn't even thought you could do that because, you know, I've, I've seen those shirts um, in the charity shops, you know, with the very long sleeves that are cufflink sleeves. And, you know, it's put me off. But the thought that you could just literally take it to a tailor. Yeah. Amazing. All out. And I've changed a lot of skirts. Some of my friends gave me um, skirts uh, a few years ago, those kind of Bowden slightly mm. velvety knee length skirts were in and the length is wrong for me but friends have passed yes. them on so I took a load into the tailor and got them shortened to above the knee which is what I like to wear right. like that right. so yeah and it's great to give the work because it's such a skilled trade isn't it and we've, yes. we've sort of stopped valuing that I yes think. I think you're right and, and, and every town will have a, a tailor's that you can kind of seek out uh, and it's like a win-win, you know, mm. bringing more business into the local economy as oh, absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And I think people say to me about it being really expensive as well. I, I hear from a lot of people, oh, Taylor, getting something altered is really expensive. Not when you look at the overall price of the garment. If you're getting something vintage or you know, mm. free love from a charity shop, and then you're paying maybe ten or twenty pounds to get it altered, you've still got a massive. Yes. good value item there I mean I bought a dress um for a wedding uh I probably told you this before a really posh wedding um that when my husband was um working and it was you know one of these posh church mm -hmm. in London big yes. affair kind of thing and I wanted to get a new dress but not a new dress so I got one from uh Etsy which was a 1950s tea dress right. it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it it's red silk 
it's actually Chinese in origin, I can tell from the labels, um, but 1950s, but they had such tight waists then. I don't know if the women would have worn a corset or something, but this was not going to do up. It was fine on, surprisingly fine on my bottom and shoulders, but not the waist. So yes. I took it down to the tailor and he managed to miraculously find a couple of inches within this, the darts and things and make that waist do up on me. So I've been able to wear that dress and he probably charged me, I don't know, 20, 25 pounds for quite a lot of work. Yes. And then obviously the dress had been good value. To, to buy a vintage pure silk dress, you know, you'd never manage to do that for under a hundred pounds, would you? Unbelievable, that is a great story. Um, so the other thing I was going to say when you're searching around the charity shops is, to again, if, if something has got a bit of a stain on it, um, don't be too scared about giving it a try, taking it home and washing it, you know, because it might just come out. Um, and, um, you know, I would definitely recommend that. And, um, you know, that leads us on to the whole caring for our clothing and uh, not washing too often. And, uh, you know, that's something that if you want to preserve these beautiful items, you know, consider washing them less or lower temperature all those good things yeah, we, all, we all we all overwash our clothes it's become yeah. probably washing machine so washing machine washing powder companies trying to encourage us to wash our clothes every yeah. time they freshening up you're supposed to wash them you don't need to you just put them on a hanger and yeah. i know there'll be people listening who will be saying a lot of charity shop clothes are made with nylon and polyester and that kind of thing and that's true but mm. if you don't wash them then those microfibers won't be coming out so yeah. better that than going in landfill isn't it yes yeah yeah and um, you know the other thing I've started to get into like steaming clothes as well you know uh, just give them a nice steam and get rid of any creases and, and that's a, another um, um, strategy really for yeah that's a really good point that that event we were at you that you mentioned earlier the only way mm. that was my first go at a steamer because um oh. by katie mack had one and she kind of yes. lent, kindly lent it to me oh. and if she confided to me she'd got hers off of ebay second hand so i have been looking on ebay to get a steamer oh great yeah, yeah well I, I i've got one that i had uh, as a christmas present a couple of years ago so it's a really good addition uh, definitely uh, hopefully someone will show up with one if more you chose. Yes, I'm sending so, it out there. Sending yeah, it out there. Put it out there. Put it out there for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I just um, would urge as well. The other thing, I take people out charity shopping, like I mentioned. But also the other thing is if you need a wardrobe edit, that is a really good thing to, to do. Because, like, having had my wardrobe edited recently, I've now got all these things that were in my wardrobe, but they were hidden. They were hidden in amongst all this other stuff. So when you've got everything out and all very visible and you can do it according to the seasons, your autumn clothes, your winter clothes and your summer clothes. So when you get up in the morning, you can go into your wardrobe and, and you can see what you've got there to wear. So it, it is helpful. And of course, if you do do the wardrobe edit, you can either donate your clothes, you can do a clothes swap with friends or you can sell them and then a little bit of extra cash. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like I like selling things on eBay because or, or whatever or any other platform, but not because of the money, which obviously is good, but it's mm. also because you know that the person buying it really does want it. Yes. And so it's going to go back into circulation again. It always yes. gives me a bit of reassurance. When, yes. When I mean, I just sold a couple of shoes, pairs of shoes on um, eBay, actually, it was, but it uh, could have been any, anywhere else. And, you know, uh, th they only uh, spent a couple of pounds on these shoes of mine, but I packaged them up nicely. I put my little card in there and I just released them back into circulation with love, thinking, yeah. wow, you know, these people are going to love these shoes. Yeah. That is a really lovely way to look at it, actually. You send them back into the circulation with love. I like that thought very much. Yes. It's, it's funny, I think the culture of thinking of second hand as second best is changing, isn't it? It's not completely changed, but I think it's definitely changing and people are seeing that there is more, more to clothing than just the piece of fabric that it's made of. You've got the skill that's gone into it, you know, you've got the stories behind it. There's so yes. many interesting things. And clothes say so much about us as a person as well, don't they? The individuality. Yes, exactly. And I think we're getting there. There is still uh, a whole kind of section of society that wouldn't dream of going into charity shops. 
but that is changing you know particularly amongst like you said young people you know sometimes I go into the charity shops now I have to find my way to the rail because there's lots of <laughs> like students young people kind of like getting their outfits together and great it's great but it, you know it's it was always like never never huge numbers of people in there but yeah that's good yeah no you're right actually you're right I mean my son um he's 16 he's just started working um voluntary at uh Zest Charity Shop in Ipswich oh. which is the hospice mm. one but it's very much aimed towards young people and he's come home now with a couple of t-shirts that he as he was putting out that he liked them so he bought them and then he actually bought his brother's birthday present from there he sent me a text saying would you like this kind of thing I thought, oh my god that's that's amazing you know he's Fantastic. yeah he says there's a lot of christmas jumpers in there at the moment so if anybody's looking for christmas jumpers go to the charity shop let's not make any more of the horrible things there's enough I have, to, I have to admit i i don't normally wear a christmas jumpers but i couldn't resist a beautiful red a Christmas jumper from Salvation Army Charity Shop uh, and it's got a beautiful uh, uh, Christmas tree on it it's full of sequins full of bling and uh, I just, I'm, so I'm going to wear it with pride this Christmas yeah no that's ever a Christmas jumper don't buy new ones they're terrible they're terrible exactly and they're mostly made out of nylon or acrylic or something that's never yeah. going to biodegrade so let's let's keep them in circulation it's not exactly like they've got any style or fashion to them but if you're <laughs> wear them, you might as well they're a one day a year maybe exactly <laughs> exactly we have we haven't had any new ones the boys are supposed to wear them to school and I've got them all from charity shops and we just the same one comes out year <laughs> on year. The difficulty is when they both got to wear it on the same day. Ah. <laughs> yeah, and talking of um, working in the charity shop, he also was introduced to steaming. Um, and the other day I said to him, I was ironing a shirt for him for school. And I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. You're 16, you can iron your own shirt. So I said, I'll give you a lesson in ironing a shirt. He said, I don't need to know that, mum. I'm just going to get a steamer. <laughs> fantastic actually yeah i was in a charity shop in felixstowe recently and uh, i was i was wondering i wasn't sure whether this particular wrap around uh, blanket thing that i bought <laughs> could be washed and she said oh don't worry about that she said we we steam everything in the shop to make it look nice but also to freshen it up to kill mm. any bacteria etc so it's another reason behind um mm. steaming your clothes We've become we've become steaming enthusiasts. Oh, we just quite, you quite, believe we're talking about steamers? I know. Fashion, clearing <laughs> pre love fashion, definitely. No, it's it's all really interesting. I mean, I, I know. I mean, I, from, from knowing you, you make this exciting, and I would urge anybody in the local area to um, contact Elaine, but also. If you want to come to Suffolk for a weekend, um, spend some time with Elaine um, doing your charity shop and uh, charity shopping and having a look around the area. It's a nice little weekend break and you'll certainly go away with bags full of not new items, which is uh, quite a good one. So what would your um, top tip be for budding style gurus who want to move into um, pre-loved? Well, just um, be open to the possibilities and um, sometimes you know just trying things on like I was showing you the all-in-one like jumpsuit I thought it was probably too big for me and I took a risk so take a risk if you can't try it on take a risk um, what do you lose maybe you lose five pound which you could think of as just a donation to your local charity so yeah take a risk because sometimes when you put things on it transforms so yeah an experiment and maybe it's time to get a new look or a new look for the weekend yeah experiment and That's as we get it. as we get older as we get older or as seasons change or you say we get a bit bored sometimes it's nice to just change what you've been wearing rather than wearing the same old thing yeah and you know talking about getting older don't be afraid when we embrace uh you know older age you know we can still enjoy fashion and still enjoy dressing up yes exactly i think i think that's one stigma that does seem to have gone um is that when you get to 40 plus you can't wear nice clothes anymore thank god that stigma has gone you know absolutely you have to Life have begins at whatever decade just choose your decade 
<laughs> choose what you want yeah exactly as, as you get older the, the <laughs> changes but no I think you're right choose the clothes that feel right for you and enjoy yourself so um thank you very much Elaine for joining us on the where does it come from podcast it's been really fun to talk to you as always and I'm hoping lots of people will get in touch um as I said at the beginning you can find Elaine on Instagram and Facebook um, and Elaine also runs a radio show don't you Elaine tell us a little bit about that Yes, I've got a local uh, radio show. It's every week. It's called the Time Capsule Show. And basically, anyone that's listening, if you'd like to join me, my guests come with four pieces of music. We talk about why you've chosen those musical um, songs and people's lives unfold. And everyone's got a great story to tell. Uh, so I really enjoy doing that. That's every Wednesday. Yeah, back to it. what time is it on Wednesday it's one o'clock until two o'clock and there's oh. all sorts of re all the replays because I've been doing it for three years even the one that you and I did we yes we had a good one fun, didn't we <laughs> <laughs> they're it's all on mixed cloud it's community yeah. radio isn't it Ipswich switch so, community radio yeah, so people can listen into that one um so yeah you can easily find Elaine because she's really good at um her digital media um I'll put some links in under the chat as well so you can find out more about um what she can offer for you and everybody start shopping secondhand if you're not doing it already and you could be a stylish Elaine so <laughs> thank you so much for spending time with us today Elaine thank you Joe. it was my pleasure